Hello Electroheads, Tish here, your go-to girl for electric car reviews and welcome back to the channel. Now I have a favourite car brand which I've been keeping from you and the reason why I've been keeping this brand from you is mostly down to price. Volvo has long been one of my favourite brands, offering high quality but understated cars. However, they haven't always aligned with the Electroheads golden rule of being budget friendly. Until today, introducing the Volvo EX30, the smallest and now most affordable electric Volvo, starting at just under £34,000. And whilst that's not budget friendly to everyone, if quality is anything like what Volvo have always offered their customers, I think that at £5,000 less than a Vauxhall Mocha, Volvo is about to put a real spanner in the works for a lot of manufacturers. The EX30 may still be flying the Swedish flag with pride, but this compact SUV is actually built under the company Geely in China. And in fact, it will be built on the same platform as the Smart Hashtag 1 and the Polestar 4. But I don't necessarily see this as a bad thing because the Smart has been one of the most surprising EVs of the year. Now, before we take a closer look, don't forget, Electroheads is the place for the latest electric mobility and car reviews, so make sure you hit subscribe. So let's begin by taking a look around the design of the new EX30. Now, unlike the brand's other electric car, the XC40 Recharge, this is only available as an electric car and that's reflected in the design. Rather than having a blanked off grille that you have on the XC40, this is a much smoother grille. It all flows together. The whole design is very simplistic. It looks very elegant, very classy. Yes, it's definitely doing it for me. The thing with the smart hashtag one is still to me, the styling was hugely controversial and I just couldn't get over the styling. Whereas this, well, this is far more palatable. I love the color as well. This is cloud blue. And I love the way that you've got the contrasting black, which if you look very carefully in the black paint, you've got flecks of glitter and they kind of work with the blue paintwork and you have those glittery elements. It really does look very nice. You also find other gloss black elements along the center of the car and you've also got a plastic black diffuser down the bottom. You've got the brand's classic Thor hammer headlamps. You thought that I was excited about the exterior of the XC30. Well, wait until we talk about the interior because I absolutely love it in here. I always loved that Volvos have such a calming element about them. They feel quite serene inside and they've still very much kept that with this new electric car. But it also feels very modern and fresh. This is probably one of the slightly more daring interiors. This is called the Breeze theme. You see, they're set up for a few different themes which change the ambience of the cabin. But this is one of my favourites. It includes this dappled dashboard and it actually is in kind of a two-step kind of design and on the production model you are going to get some ambient lighting which will run along the bottom as well and I think that's just going to finish everything off. I also really like that in other Volvos you can get crystal elements so they do a crystal gear shifter. It's something that I've always quite liked and they don't exactly have that in the EX30 but they have bought a slight element of it across and you've got this kind of plastic inside the air vents which I'm assuming when it has a little bit of ambient lighting it will reflect and it will look very very nice, very premium. And it does feel premium as well as looking it as well. Everything is soft. Now there's no lever on the interior of this car and it's extremely heavily recycled. We've got the floor mats. So they're made up of recycled PET, so recycled plastic bottles. You've also got this dashboard, which is actually made from recycled kind of windows and shutter blinds and things like that, which blows my mind because this is very soft. It doesn't feel like it would be made out of windows and then you've got the seats as well so they have a leather look though they say that they don't like to compare it to leather because it's completely leather free but it is made 
with um, some oils which are found in Swedish forests. So they're still using the elements of where this car come from, but without using animal product. You've also got this cloth part of the seats, which they call a pixel design, which again may not be to everybody's taste, but I think when blended all together with all the elements in this car, it looks really good. And not forgetting, you still have that classic Swedish flag, which is so important to Volvo interiors. Practicality wise, I think this is fantastic. So it seems to have the best of all worlds of electric cars that I've driven because you've got a kind of hollowed out center console which you can pop things in, but you've also got a little storage compartment down here where you can pop your mobile phone away, hide it out of sight, and you can also charge it with two USB-C chargers. But if you wanted some wireless charging, then there is a couple of pads which are gonna sit upright on this section here, and that will fit two mobile phones side by side. Now, here's the bit that I absolutely love so this center console watch this when you press here voila you get two cup holders but it also if you pop it in again one cup holder <laughs> i just love that that's very i'm very easily pleased aren't i i understand that but i just think these clever little elements of storage kind of practicality they're really great for using this car often it feels very nice and though you do have a lot of systems which are in the touchscreen, it does have a very, very intuitive Google Assistant. So when you want to do different elements that perhaps you would sometimes use controls for, it should, I can't actually use it at the moment, but I have used other Google systems like they're using in some of the Renaults. It should be very, very intuitive to what you're looking to do, which I quite actually like. You've got a very simplistic steering wheel, squared off, which is a little bit quirky. It's very classy. You've got these black gloss buttons, which are not haptic. They are physical buttons. So round of applause, Volvo, for not falling into that trap. So when you press them, you do get some physical feedback, which is really nice. And you've, of course, got the drive selectors behind the steering wheel, like in a lot of other electric cars. And then very simply, you've got the controls for your lights and for your window wipers on the left-hand side. It's super, super simple, so simple that you don't even have an infotainment system up front, which I know a few people might find a little bit odd. You do just have this center touchscreen with the controls displayed at the top. So very similar to in something like the Tesla Model 3. Now, Volvo say that they don't think it's actually essential to have a digital instrument cluster because your eyes most of the time will automatically come off of the road onto the center touchscreen. I'm not too sure how that will actually work. I'll have to drive it and tell you when I get a chance to do that. But actually, at the moment, where it is sitting, it does feel very intuitive to where you look. You will notice that there isn't any paddles behind the steering wheel, so there's no different levels of brake regen. There is just the one option, which is either the one pedal on or one pedal off. There is a small amount of brake regen when the one pedal is turned off, but it is just those two modes. So if you're getting used to brake regen, this keeps things nice and simple. When it comes to rear interior space, you can't expect bucket loads. This is now the smallest SUV that Volvo do, and that is reflected in the rear interior space. But I think for most people, it's more than adequate. I've got a nice amount of legroom, and actually, headroom is really good, despite having the luxury of a full panoramic frameless sunroof. This is really lovely, actually, and it makes it feel very, very luxurious, even in the back of the EX30. You do have the rear window switches, which are in the center console, along with two USB ports. You've also got pockets on both of the seats and even somewhere to pop your mobile phone. And what I really love is you also have access to a bit of interior space inside the center console. And look at that, you've got a cute little graphic on this removable center console. Because there isn't a load tunnel, that does mean 
person sitting in the middle actually has an okay amount of leg room, but this does come quite far back, so you can't quite squeeze your feet behind it unless you've got really small feet. I mean, I'm a size four and I think that's considered quite small, but anything smaller will probably just about tuck behind there. The only real thing missing is any rear center cup holders. That simple and elegant design is flowed through to the rear of the AX30 as well. Like a lot of other manufacturers, Volvo have used the illusion of a contrasting black roofline to look like a coupe, but simple doesn't have to be boring. And there's loads of design elements which I love on the rear of this car. One, for instance, is the EX30, which is just in between the top and the bottom of the roof line. You also have Volvo, which is lit up in these C signature lights. Volvo have also chosen to stay with the vertical lights, which are so signature to their brand. You have the lights connected with not a light bar, but two black segments, which just seem to frame the Volvo nameplate. It feels like they're very proud of this car, and I think they should be because it looks great. Now, inside the boot, you're not gonna find the most enormous amount of space nor is it as practical as some other Volvos, but you will find 318 litres of boot space, including the 61 litres which are underneath the boot floor. And whilst that isn't enormous, for people who are going to have this as an entry level Volvo, you're probably not going to need any more. It's plenty for a couple of carry-on suitcases or your weekly shop. Have you ever taken an impromptu visit to Ikea and you've left that lamp behind because you didn't know whether it would fit in your car? Well, Swedish car maker Volvo can't stand the thought of you leaving that lamp behind and that's why you'll now find a plate which explains exactly how much storage space you have and even gives you an example of what will fit. So, make sure you buy that lamp. From launch, it will be available with three different powertrains single motor, single motor extended range, and twin motor performance, as well as two trim levels, plus and ultra. Now the single motor will be able to achieve 214 miles, and this is from a 49 kilowatt hour usable battery. The extended range gets a larger 69 kilowatt hour battery, which is able to achieve 298 miles. And both cars will offer a healthy amount of power, with the single motor car achieving 272 horsepower and 343 newton meters of torque. And if you liked the sound of the Brabus hashtag one, but you didn't want anything quite so in your face, then the twin motor performance EX30 will get a similar 428 horsepower and 543 newton meters of torque, sprinting from 0 to 62 in 3.6 seconds. Although range does take a small hit to 286 miles. Charging isn't quite up there with the likes of Kia and Hyundai, but it's still a pretty decent amount. With the compact 49 kilowatt hour battery topping out at 134 kilowatts and the larger battery 153 from a rapid charger. I spend so much time with so many different EVs that it can all get a little bit overwhelming. And sometimes it takes something truly special to stand out from the crowd. I thought I had that with the smart hashtag one, but I just couldn't get over the styling of it. And then this comes through, the EX30, from a brand that I really think truly have an elegance, but also a quality about them. And I'm so pleased that their new entry level EV lives up to all of those expectations. But do you know what? I think this is going to bring in a new generation of Volvo owners because it's not afraid to have fun. You've got that new cloud color. You've also got the new blue interior. And I love that about it. But let me know, have I just been overwhelmed by the EX30? Is there things that I'm missing that you think it doesn't quite live up to in expectations? Let me know in the comments down below. If you have enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. Wanna see more? Then you know what to do. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Until next time, Electroheads, bye.